All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the yellow hydraulic system triple indicator in the A320 flight deck. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below, all that kind of good stuff. Just helps me keep the channel moving forward here. So thank you so much if you've done so already. So I will go ahead and bring up the slide that we're going to talk about today. So as I mentioned, we are down here in the center area of the flight deck talking about this little guy right here. So the triple indicator as the FCOM or the book refers to it, specifically what we're looking at here is yellow hydraulic system indications. And there's a reason why we have this indicator here for the yellow system and we don't have one for the other systems because this, this plays a vital role at a, a couple, you know, important points in time let's say when we're operating the airplane both when we're you know under normal circumstances and when we're in like an abnormal you know case let's say and I'll I'll come back and touch on those about you know uh, towards the end of the segment when we'll talk about you know like like we said you know how we use this this dial here in the real world but you know first off I wanted to to you know just talk through each of the indications and tell you specifically about what they are and then we'll, I wanted to bring up the schematic and mention a few things to you but the, the first thing that we're going to mention here is just the, the indication that we see here on the top is the uh, accumulator pressure so we have a hydraulic accumulator in all three systems and the, you know the accumulator serves the purpose of um, you know absorbing transient loads uh, you know to the hydraulic demands of the airplane but it also you know stands by in a sense in the case of if there is some sort of emergency scenario, we've still got a little bit of residual hydraulic power, you know, let's say like stored up in the system we could use to do different things in the airplane. So the, the accumulator pressure here, it's showing, you know, of course, in its normal park position here, right at 3000 PSI, that's, you know, more or less all the time, you know, you'll see this here. If you ever saw an indication that, that wasn't exactly that, you would know that something is off and needs to be looked at or rectified. And it doesn't necessarily mean that something is broken, but, you know, let's say the airplane was sitting for a long point in time and it didn't have any pumps running, uh, the, the accumulator pressure would actually bleed off over a certain period of time. And I, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how long that period is. Uh, but I, I want to say it's a substantial number of hours that, you know, this the, you know, you know, accumulator can provide pressure uh, to you in the sense of keeping the brakes, um, you know, the parking brakes uh, set, let's say. So uh, that leads to the next one here on the bottom here, we have the, the brake indication itself. So remember the, the parking brake specifically is powered off the yellow electric system and the, you know, the normal brakes are powered off the green. So once again, let's make that break in the, the mentality, you know, standpoint there, let's say, you know, once again, we're parked at the gate and you're actually using the, the parking brake lever that's on the center pedestal there. It's actually the yellow system pressure that's powering those. And, you know, that differs once again from when you're taxiing around and you're actually using the brake pedals or, you know, let's say the auto brake if you're landing, uh, it's the green system that's powering the brakes in that circumstance. So uh, just like we said, in normal circumstances, that's the way that it's set up and designed. You know, here we are, at this point, you know, looking at these needles, we are sitting at the parking, uh, or excuse me, at the gate with the parking brake set. So we have an indication of about 2000 PSI going to the, the left side and the right side, which just means the left and the right brake specifically. So um, I wanted to, like I said, come back and just bring up a schematic real quick about, um, you know, just like I said, I wanted to elaborate just a little bit more on the, the system accumulator here. So uh, like we said, you know, talking specifically about the yellow system here. So we, we have the, the depiction here of this accumulator that, that sits, you know, in, in the schematic, you know, that we're looking at here. It, more or less just think of it as sitting up line from where all the pumps are. So in the yellow system, remember, we have an engine driven pump. We have that yellow electric pump that can provide power. And there's also a hand pump that the, the outside crew can use. And this is, you know, there specifically so that they can have hydraulic power to um, raise and lower the cargo doors if, if they need to be able to do that and that the rest of the plane isn't powered up. So, you know, once again, downstream of all these, the pumps here in the system, we have the accumulator, that, like we said, it just, it, it sits there with this pent up, you know, stored up amount of pressure into it that if none of this other stuff was working, you could get some of that pressure out into the system and, and get it to power different things. And, you know, the, the real, um, or, you know, one of the biggest, you know, points in time where this becomes um, relevant to us, and we kind of talked about it a little bit, we touched on it, when we, you know, if you go back and, and look at the, the anti-skid and nose wheel, uh, you know, presentation I did a couple days ago, uh, where we talk about the situation of, you know, if you're in a, um, the case where the normal braking on the airplane is not working and you have to land and you have to decelerate the aircraft and get to slow down, you can actually switch the airplane to use um, the alternate braking system. And when you're doing that, now you're actually using that yellow system, um, you know, the, 
the pressure or you know maybe it's coming out of the accumulator to power the um, the alternate brakes and get the airplane slowed down and you know affect the safe outcome of course so like we said this accumulator could become really important if like everything else in the airplane is broken you know with both hydraulic systems you, you don't have any pumps to power anything you could still get some some pressure out to those brakes there and that kind of ties in and circles back to you know one of the first things I, I started to mention about you know why exactly do we have this triple indication here in the first place and it you know part of the reason is that it stands for that you know if you are in that case where you're on you know you're in an emergency situation you're using the alternate braking system you're, you're actually limited to you know 1000 psi um, pressure in the system and that's you know so you don't lock up the brakes and that, I guess there's nothing specifically that would would hold you back from you know actually if you did put too much pressure on the tow brakes there you could administer more than a thousand psi but the goal like we said in this scenario is to keep it no more than a thousand psi at the brakes there if you're in this emergency condition so once again the the whole point everything I'm trying to say to you guys here is that the indicator exists here for that case where you know if you need to look down a reference and see you know how much pressure I'm actually putting on these brakes here in this scenario you can look down there and verify and, and see exactly what's going out to the brakes in that scenario the other point in time where this the indicator is important to us actually there's a couple um, when we first push off the gate and we go ahead and set the parking brake it actually serves as a visual indication and this is actually written in our manuals that both pilots will take a look at this indicator and they'll affirm that you know hey this is our one way to um, actually completely verify that the parking brake is actually set or just to verify there's actually pressure out there and the airplane's not going to go rolling anywhere and this is certainly a safety thing there have been cases where maybe there's been a malfunction you know that would be kind of a more of a rare circumstance where you actually manipulate that parking brake lever and nothing happens at the wheels uh, but more of the case where you know you get distracted I mean there's all sorts of different things that are happening around an airplane where you're getting pushed back and there there have sadly enough been cases where the the captain forgot to set the brake and the push crew goes to disconnect the airplane and the, the plane goes rolling away or into the tug or you know goes on and hurts somebody so it's it's certainly an important thing for us to to verify and check and this is our way that we do it in the airbus is like we said we both take a look and we verify that you know hey we've got good pressure you know at the brakes there so we're not going to go rolling away and the ground crew is safe to disconnect and uh, you know everybody can you know proceed on doing their normal things that they normally do and the other one, the other time that we look at this indicator, and this is an everyday thing, every time when you first start to taxi away, the captain does a uh, brake check. And this is all written into the manuals, and there's actually like a call out for it uh, that, you know, you, you know, it's a challenge and response kind of thing. So the, the captain will start moving, and one of the first things he's going to do is he's going to depress the brakes a little bit just to test to see that, you know, okay, everything is functioning uh, so he'll say brake check and the cat or excuse me the fo is going to look over at this point in time and he's going to affirm that there is um, there's no pressure actually you know indicated on these the two needles here when you're taxiing away uh, and the the response of course so you know captain says brake check first officer says pressure zero and this is just affirming that the normal braking system is working on the you know on the airplane as advertised and nothing is malfunctioning beneath the hood there so like we said just a moment ago, you know, when you're normally taxiing around the airplane, you use those tow brakes. It's the green system that is supplying the the brake pressure. So in this instance, if you're taxiing off the gate and the captain puts the, the he depresses the the brakes with his toes, and if you see an indication on this indicator here, it's telling you that hey, you're in an abnormal state now, and the yellow system is actually providing the pressure out to the brakes there. You need to stop and take a look, and something's not right, and you need to get this addressed. So. That's pretty much all I could think of to tell you guys about the triple indicator there. As always, if you have more questions about that, please leave them down in the comment section there below, and I'll do my best to field those for you. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and field another uh, Q&A section. I had a, a viewer write in a few days ago with a quick and simple question. And we had talked about this one a, you know, a couple segments ago, but I wanted to recap it. It's a good question. Uh, but Phil Eckberg, so first of all, um, I hope I'm saying your name right, and thank you so much for leaving a comment and writing in, but he was watching the video where we, we were talking about the manual engine starts, and something caught his attention, um, and it's the, the specific verbiage of, um, he wanted to know what does the term crank mean in the Airbus, and this, this comes directly off the engine starting panel, if you recall, in the center pedestal, there's a position, I believe you, you turn the, uh, the, the switch to the left there, if my memory serves me, right off the bat uh, there's a crank only position and 
you know, it's, it's kind of a funny word that Airbus chose to, to use for this function, but this word specifically crank, it just means that you're, um, you're seeking to dry motor the engine, or in other words, just to get the internal working as the engine spun up without the intent of actually starting it. So you're gonna allow the engine to spin and not introduce any fuel or ignition into the system, which, you know, would of course make the engine start if everything was, you know, working properly and, and what have you. But, you know, like we said, you know, one of the, the main reasons that we want to have this feature there and what we use it for in the real world, and this is a, this really is a very rare circumstance in the Airbus because, you know, like, you know, if you want some more detail on this, go back, you know, there, there was a portion where we talked about the automatic engine starts and there's all these safeguards built in the system. But, you know, going back to like, you know, base level functionality um, and things that if we want to, you know, take it out of the automated mode and do certain things for a specific reason, like we said, you can, you know, get this process started. In other words, you know, dry motoring the engine. And like we said, the, the reason we would do something like this is, you know, if we had a start malfunctioning, we were, we were concerned about some residual fuel or air vapor still residing in the engine there. If you were to go and make another engine attempt and all that the, the stuff wasn't cleared out, you can actually cause an explosion or a fire even back in the engine there. So this is, of course, something we, we would try to avoid. So the intent would be that, okay, you're going to crank the engine over, you're going to dry motor it, you're going to try to blow all that stuff out of the back before you, you know, kind of stop, reset everything and try to make another attempt at starting the engine. Or I'm sure there's there's various things that the maintenance folks need to do or they're, you know, cranking the engine or dry motoring it. But, you know, for us as pilots, like we said, that main scenario is the one that I just outlined there a moment ago where you're just, you're trying to clear the engine out of fuel and air vapors uh, to, you know, go on and try to start it again. So uh, I hope that all makes sense, Phil. And uh, thank you again so much for tuning in. So uh, once again, I really appreciate you guys watching the channel. If you want to show some support, you can uh, stop off at the Teespring store there and be sure to pick up your bus driver t-shirt <laughs> if you want. But uh, other than that, I hope you guys are staying healthy and safe out there. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk again real soon. Take care.